In this demo, I will highlight the usage of TIAs within an extension rule. I will start by logging into the Configure and Modeling environment with a user that has the Product Configure and Manage a Job role. Then I will navigate to the workspace which I had previously created in order to work with the model for this demo. Here in the workspace, I will select the four-door sedan car model by clicking its name from the Name column. First, let's switch the View of the Structure tab to display the model items by their descriptions. As you can see, this car model has a TIA at the root node called Smart Part Number. Using an extension rule, we'll be using this TIA to build out a configuration level part number, which can be used during manufacturing to optimize the assembly of identically configured cars. To keep this demo simple, we will use a 21 character part number, and we will segment it into four parts to capture the engine type, five characters, drive type, seven characters, seat trim, four characters, and the exterior color of the car, which will be five characters. Let's get started by navigating to the rules tab. Here we'll need to create several extension rules, one for each standard item under the option classes that represent each part of the smart part number. For the most part, these extension rules are identical, and to speed up the process, I have created the rules for the drive type, seat trim, and the exterior color option classes standard items. And now I will show you how to create an extension rule for one of the engine type standard items. To create a new extension rule, I will click the plus icon in the Rule Subpanels toolbar and then I will select the Create Extension Rule action from the drop down list. Alternatively, I could have selected the Action menu, Create, and then selected the Extension Rule menu item. In the Create Extension Rule dialog box, I will provide the required rule name and optionally a description, then click OK. In the newly created extension rule, I will first provide a base node for the rule, which will be the 3.6 liter dual overhead cam under the engine type option class. The base node is the model node, which the rule will act on when the node value changes. To do this, I will navigate to the 3.6 liter dual overhead cam under the engine type option class from the structure subpanel and select it. Next, I will click the Set Note Path toolbar icon and then select the Set as Base Note action. This will add the fully qualified path of the 3.6 liter dual overhead cam standard item to the Base Note field. Alternatively, if I know the name of the node, I can simply type it into the Base Note field and tab out. Then the fully qualified path of the node will automatically be calculated, assuming the node name is unique in the model definition. Next, I will provide the Groovy code that performs the string operation needed to prepend the five character code for the selected engine type to the smart part number. Let's maximize the Groovy code editor to examine the code. Here I have a private method that initializes the smart part number TIA to an all zero string if it has not already been initialized. Next, I have a method called setSPN to replace the first five characters of the smart part number with the last five characters of the name of the selected engine type. Now let's minimize the code editor and validate the rule so far for any errors. OK, looks good. The last step needed to complete the authoring of this extension rule is to create the trigger or the event for when the extension rule will be executed. In release 12, the only supported event is when the value of the base node changes. This event is called a post value change or a PVC. To add a PVC for this rule, I will click the create toolbar action from the event bindings table. This action will add a new event binding row to the table with the event and the event scope fields pre-filled. Next, I will select the class and the method to be executed for this event binding.
It's worth noting that when I clicked the validate action a moment ago to validate the rule, this process first parsed and compiled the Groovy code and then updated the list of values for the class and method fields as well. This means if I change the Groovy code to add a new class or method, I must first validate the rule before I can select it from the list of values for the class and method fields. Let's validate the rule one last time to ensure all the necessary parts of the rule are valid. So far, so good. Now to test our changes, I will click the test model action, select the step-by-step -step UI user interface from the test model dialog box, and click OK. Let's select the sports trim package and click Next. Notice because this model has a constraint rule, when I selected the sports package, the engine type, drive type, as well as the seat trim options were automatically selected for me. And as you can see, the smart part number has been updated to reflect those selections. Very nice. However, it looks like the last part of the smart part number, which is representative of the exterior color of the car, has not been calculated yet. Let's go ahead and select the color from the exterior options screen. Perfect. The smart part number now is ready. To review the configuration, let's navigate to the review screen by clicking the finish and review button. As you can see, the smart part number is included with the base model node for this configuration and will be passed down to the downstream fulfillment processes such as manufacturing. In conclusion, this demo highlighted the power of TIAs within extension rules. We hope this demo was both instructive and useful and look forward to highlighting other exciting Fusion Configurator features in the near future.